Hi, it's Andrew Eborn here, and my very special guest today is none other than Jonathan Hansler. How are you doing, Jonathan? I'm very good, Andrew, and I'm very relieved to see that the plaque is there. I'm very proud of this. I'll, I'll tell the story in a moment. But... Ah, oh, that's somebody me. calling us. Excuse me, one second. Sorry. So Lovely. tell us, so this is, this is where we are. Where are we at the moment? So this is obviously celebrating I love, the life I of... Love, I love the fact, if you can just see there, they've got the establishment, because they've started a new comedy club there. A guy called David Lewis. Is, I, and before lockdown, I was supposed to have coffee with him to discuss it, because back in 2008, I ran the Disestablishment Club, which was a sort of parody on the old establishment club, which Peter ran back in the 60s, in 61 to 64, I think it's, it ran for. And, um, it was basically the reason why it was called the disestablishment because it was non-satirical. We weren't particularly satire, whereas the original establishment was very satire based. So, um, and, and yeah, it was, we had all sorts of people come in and do gigs. So we had Paul Foote, we had Tony Law, all sorts of people. And then it didn't work because you had to put a, um, a money down on it because um, they had to make a certain amount. And if you didn't make a certain amount, you know, if, if 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 we had wanted to hire the whole place, it would have cost us a lot. So we hired the back and we got it for free. Um, we had, well, didn't hire it, did we? But we just got it for free. And so um, that's where we put on the, because I love Peter so much, we we, we, we we put on the establishment, the disestablishment club there uh, in, in his name. And when we moved out, we moved down to the, co the comedy at the private eye dining room above the Coach and Horses, which was the old private eye dining room. We put comedy on there as well. So it was um, a double whammy, really. But we're both, uh, four of us managed to get that uh, plaque up to Peter. We didn't think we'd get it up, but they had a big night where people like Barry Cryer came and I couldn't be there for some. I don't know why I wasn't there. There was a reason why I couldn't be there. Um, but they had all sorts of people come down and well-known faces look at, you know, because the plaque's incredible. I'm so proud of it. You know, we're all very proud of it, all four of us. Um, and, 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 you know, um, Robert Ross also, who, who does a lot of stuff on comedy, on British comedy also, is part of the, uh, the, the plaque, you know, putting it up there. So for the four of us, very proud of it. Um, and now that they're, they're bringing the establishment clap, it's, they're back, it's brilliant. It's brilliant, you know? Oh, fantastic. And the process of getting a plaque erected, it takes ages and ages and ages, doesn't it? T talk to me about that. Well, the process of getting anything erected takes ages. But no, the, um, <laughs> yes. Uh, well, especially when you get to a certain age. I mean, my God. Anyway, I'm in the afterlife. What do I know? Sorry, carry on. What were you saying? <laughs> what were you saying? There you go. I'll set them up. You knock about the field. Oh, I love well, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a bit of Peter there. Bless him. But yeah, yeah. It's always a joy. No, it actually takes ages to get one of these plaques erected, as they say. So talk yeah, about how, yeah. how that came about. It, it did take ages. And they were really umming and ahhing about it. Because it's the Heritage Foundation. And the Heritage Foundation, I don't think it exists anymore. There's another company that do plaques now. The Heritage Foundation, it was one of the last plaques that ever went up. And um, we didn't think we'd get it. And it was, it was due to, um, I, I keep forgetting everyone's name and I feel terrible because I can't remember everyone's name. There was a girl called Sally. And I can't remember her second name, if I could. I, and, and Robert Ross and myself and another guy called Mark. And we used to meet after the comedy gigs um, when we ran them and talk about how we were gonna do something for Peter because we wanted something to, memor to remember Peter's incredible club that you know was in it was just the most it was a very naughty club back in the 60s because they did stuff uh, that they couldn't do on stage because in those days you had to have a license to um to say naughty words on stage and things you, you couldn't really do it and so this was the late night sort of end of the show where people would just go along and you know um have a bit of a uh you know late night chat all that kind of thing you know Oh, brilliant stuff. And your fascination, because you have your own show, The Afterlife of uh, uh, Peter yeah, McDowell. I've turned it into a sitcom, you know, and that's, that's and I, we, I hopefully we'll do a little chat with Clive and me, but, um, but yeah, we've turned it into a sitcom. We didn't know we'd do it. I mean, we had a 28-page film script, and I said to Clive, I said, well, why don't we just turn it into a sitcom? And he went, nah, it's not going to work. I said, yes, it will. Why wouldn't it? And so we, we have, we've turned it into a 28, uh, 28 page at the moment, but we've got six episodes, which we've planned out, which is all about people being dead and people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, we bring you live, live, what I love live about all the dead people. It's got to be but good. What I love about it, Andrew, Andrew, what I absolutely love about it, and I think this is really important, is you're not a Hitchhiker's Guide, but Hitchhiker's Guide starts off on Earth. 
that's how it, that's the premise. And suddenly the spaceship comes along and takes them off and they go on to the out, they go to the galaxy. And you know, they never, they were back on earth. That's exactly what happens with Pete and Doug. It starts off in Derek and Clive when they're recording Derek and Clive, they split up. I won't go in too much into it. I don't want to give too much away, but Peter dies and Dudley has to go to his funeral. And then Peter starts haunting Dudley and it's crazy and mad and nuts. And Dudley thinks he's going mad because he keeps seeing Peter every, I mean, it's nuts. It's, it's, it's crazy. But, and then other comedians like Morecambe and Wise come into it and stuff like that. But there are so many brilliant comedians about today that can do these roles, take these roles on. You know, it's, um, it's wonderful. Oh, absolutely. And British comedy and, and that whole satirical movement, which is something um, yeah. on a global basis. I mean, Dudley went off to, uh, famously went off to Hollywood and things like that. Peter stayed yeah. here. Why was that? Peter, well, basically, if, if you watch Parkinson's interviews, Peter says, you know, he says, um, you know, my home is here in England. You know, my home is here. I have my family here. I have my, my um, you know, I have my children here. I have my wife here. And Dudley, is, I love him very much, the uh, poison dwarf, has gone off to, um, to Hollywood to, um, you know, uh, where he fits the grade very well, you know, for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, if they're doing a remake, you know, and um, and of course it, it was that. I mean, there, there is a rift. Uh, there is, and we, you know, to create drama, you have to have some kind of conflict. You can't just have nice things happening. So perhaps we exaggerate, perhaps the rift between them. But I think there was a rift between them. And although lots of people seem to say, "Oh no, Dudley and Peter got on fame." I can't see that. I was in a double act for nine years. It's not easy, you know. Um, it's not easy. You, you know, they were together for 18 or something, you know, and it's not easy to, you know, um, to stay together. I mean, you're, you're sharing the same hotel rooms for God. Well, you know, next door to each other, you know, and there's no way that gonna, everything's going to be light and roses. It, the, this industry isn't like that. And, and as you say, it's like, I mean, you have a lot of double acts and a lot of band members on, on the show. And it is, it's like a marriage, especially when you're on the road all the time. And the tensions, you're always in it together. And there's no escape, is there? No escape. No escape. And we, we were, I mean, I was drinking, for God's sake, when I was in a double act. Can you imagine what that was like? I mean, I was, I was you know, I get slaughtered after, after every gig. And, and so, um, and that was nine years of work. You know, we worked solidly. We did gigs. We did Edinburgh Festival. We were at, we won the Les Best Com Les Comedy Best Festival Newcomer. We were at Hackney and Fine New New uh, New, uh, New Act of the Year finalists. We didn't win, but we were you know our microphones didn't work, which is why we didn't win. Uh, they cut off completely, and only two rows could hear us. But apparently, um, I don't think was it Arthur Smith is uh, Arthur. He, he's not deaf, so I think he was about three rows back. He heard us, and then he brought us to do his gig with the next, you know, later on. But we, you know, we had our moment, but we, we could have gone much bigger. You could have, but, and you know, I love that. That should be the name, rather than Jeffrey Barnard is unwell. We should have Arthur Smith is not deaf. And that's yeah. what we oh, made it. We made oh, it. Uh, Jonathan, it's right. always a pleasure. We will get you back. Eight great interviews, all done in Yeah, we need to talk about the sitcom, where it's going. I mean, I, everything I've done in my life has really been for Peter, because I love him. I know he had a tough life, and I think he was, a, my theory, he had a very difficult childhood. I don't, it was discussed on Parkinson, where he talks about certain things, I won't go into them, but buggery being one of them. But he does talk, and everyone laughs in the studio, that would not be the case today, and I think that's another story. But yeah, I don't think everything was quite rosy with Peter. Yeah. We'll come back. We've got lots more to discuss. Jonathan, thank you so much for being my guest. Take I'd care. I'd love to, Andrew. Thank you. Always. Always, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.